Back to thinking out loud. I'm Joel. I'm Kayan. I am really excited to do this. You and I haven't done one of these in a while. It's true. It's okay. been a while. I think it was. Uh, it's in, been since like summer. It was since summer. Yeah. Well, which it's always summer here in Detroit. It's beautiful. Kayan. So uh, we are we are back again. We're excited. All right. So this is interesting. We're gonna we're gonna do a create the campaign, right? Yes. Um, which we have not done for a while, and we've got a super fascinating product um, that reaches down someplace really deep inside of me because anything that elicits 80s TV commercials yeah. is automatically deeply meaningful to me. So there is a company uh, that was around in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. right? All the way from 1961 to 1995, so wow. all okay. encompassing. Yeah, they, that, <laughs> that's fascinating. Okay, so company is Brim Coffee. Uh, which was notorious for their psychedelic commercials back in the 1960s and their odd little sketches in the 70s and then um, really hyper cheesy dynasty style setting sun, flowing hair, big 80s swoop um, commercials in the 80s, right? Um, so they have huge brand recognition back from way back when. Right. But they're re they're, they're, now it's a totally new company. Right. And is it still coffee? It is not still coffee. Okay. So they were a famously decaffeinated coffee company. So all of the commercials, the whole shtick is kind of like, oh, I love coffee, but I can't drink it because it's too much caffeine. A feeling I'm very familiar with. <laughs> oh, um, just half a cup. <laughs> and their tagline, I think, was, um, well, it's brim, so you can fill it to the rim. So, so and that was the uh, title, like fill it to the rim with brim. And yeah, would exactly. Say about it and, exactly. Okay. Right, in good. every possible commercial. Um, so that they sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? Reincarnated. Yes, reincarnated. Um, where the brand name was bought in 2008 by another company who then really started releasing coffee makers. So they started with like a mid-market coffee like, maker. Like, like, a, like, a, like a legitimate like they, just pot that in like a drip coffee maker? They started with a drip coffee maker mm -hmm. and now, and then they were selling that for a couple of years and now they've just announced or announced last year that they're going to sell this artisanal, fancy, third wave set of coffee equipment. So like a pour over coffee kit, a cold brew coffee kit. I'm really not well versed enough in coffee equipment Wait, to what, explain what, it, what it, any of those things a, are. A, a pour over um, kit? That, is it like a drip pour over kit? Or is there something I more swanky and I feel special? like I'm being trapped into saying something wrong right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not okay. going to say All right. anything. I don't know. <laughs> so, but but, but so, some, something customized, specialized, artisanal where it, it, right. it is like this is maybe like what's that? This is the modern incarnation where like you know you go back fifteen years and like the really great uh, Christmas present was an espresso maker. Right. right, like that's what you like, and you can recreate totally. the coffee shop. Yeah, it's like the thing that you want, but you don't want to spend money on. Right, but yeah. now the like the, the hip thing is less. It's more pour over. Like that's right. the hot thing right now. Yeah, and so they're they're doing at home. Okay, all right, good. So it's interesting um, because the campaign that they're currently running is not really much of a campaign because the products haven't actually been released yet. They're being released in May 2018, um, but they've gotten a decent amount of PR because they're resurre resurrecting this oh, old brand. Yeah. 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 So they're because I think they did a study in that in 2008 there was still a 92% brand recognition for Brim Coffee, despite the fact that it had been off the market for like 20 years. Wow. Yeah, which is huge. That's staggering. But it's also kind of in the sweet spot where people are like, yeah, I think coffee, but like don't really Right, know. so there's enough of association yeah, that it's like, not out of bounds, but it doesn't pigeonhole them into one particular right. product line. That's very smart, guys. Very <laughs> clever. Well done. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to, um, all right, I think we, we understand enough about what they're doing right now. Uh, let's, this is interesting. Like, like we could create a really cool campaign around this yeah. because you've got something that has that brand recognition. So mm -hmm. it's like, there's just, 
they've already taken care of just by virtue of they, you know, the, the purchasing the naming rights. They've already taken care of the top of the funnel. Right. So now there's like we can drop down a level in the funnel and really hit the consideration set, right? Right. Um, I think it's interesting because it's it's interesting that they've chosen to they have this door open to brand themselves as artisanal third wave yeah. like fancy special um and it's all very clean and well done and the way that they've chosen to do it is by bringing in this brand ambassador her name's blair smith and she's like a u.s brewer cupping champion or something like that <laughs> like like i don't know what the what people call themselves in the coffee world but she's a big deal i guess um and a, so a cupping champion. yeah no it's a thing <laughs> it's a thing and That's so great. they've got this beautiful interactive website super clean and it is really teaching people about artisanal coffee which i think yeah. is the interesting part where influencer could really come into play and be really fantastic oh, yeah. because there's a lot of like you said we're in the consideration part of the funnel now and there's a lot of education surrounding this product mm -hmm. which is why i think influencer would make a lot of sense yep. because it's sort of aspirational it's like i drink coffee and i would i maybe would like to drink fancy coffee but i don't know it's intimidating and so influencers and using influencers can kind of like bridge that gap yeah well i mean the question is like all right does te technique matter like does it matter whether i perk whether i drip whether i pour over like what does that do what right I, and i have no idea yeah like i've never i've never bothered it would be interesting though if i was watching one of my favorite influencers and they're like hey this is legitimately cool stuff and this is why it matters and this is it actually to have them walk through that process. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you've got, you've had a conversation with Bryn. They're like, yes, we want influencers. What do you propose to them? I would say just go straight for the lifestyle niche on Instagram. So you've got people who do home decor, people who are minimalist, just generally people in design. Um, why, why that cohort? Why design? Like, what, what, is, what is that segment of the population? What do they signal to you that says they're right for something like this? Kind of the, the type of people who care a lot about what they buy and put a lot of time into thinking about why this specific product is the best of all of the choices that I have. Okay. Sort of like your your conscious consumer, but not necessarily in like an eco friendly way, but in a I care about the good things kind of quality, quality conscious okay, person. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, no, that make that makes that makes an enormous amount of sense. And then what? So how how involved should Brim be in this? Like what? Like I mean, is there? Do you think that they should? Does the difference in pour over coffee speak for itself and like they can just kind of seed some of these activations? Do we need Blair Smith to come on the show and walk us through it? How heavy handed yeah. should they be? I think they should be pretty heavy handed because there is, it is the first time that they're putting their brand out there um, in this way. Okay. Uh, so I think they should, you know, send Blair Smith to meet with some influencers, maybe have the influencers come to their studio and teach them how to make a really awesome cup of coffee. So like have a mix of influencers who know a lot about it, care a lot about it already, but then also others who are just sort of generally lifestyle influencers who have engaged audiences, but also know nothing about coffee. Okay, so there's a, there is a uh, segment that is notorious for having uh, large amounts of disposable income um, caring about the finer things and putting money toward it. Tech. Yeah. What would they do? How would they, how would they, cause that's, I mean, that is a massive, massive consumer segment. How would they break into the tech space meaningfully with influencers? I think in the same way as the others. Okay. Do you have any ideas on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, well, I mean, what'd be really fascinating is like, hey, is there is there a definitive answer between what the difference of drip coffee, which is pour over, it's just dripping onto grains, which I mean, we're we're talking about a <laughs> pretty slight semantic difference, as far as I can tell. But no, what what is what happens chemically between 
pour over versus drip. Right. Like, what is the difference? Why would why would anyone care mm -hmm. to, to go through the hassle of doing something different there? Um, I think that needs explanation. I think it's the kind of thing that the tech crowd would really walk out on, yeah. where they could say, well, you know, um, like this is the difference and like give them, you know, kind of a water cooler, a cocktail party talking point about <laughs> what the difference is. I think that's, I think that's an approach. I think you have, um, you, you look, you can have a, a couple, you have a handful of really, really influential tech influencers, right? I mean, yeah. you know, somebody like a Leo Laporte actually ran a coffee campaign on Tonks Coffee that got later bought and, and we were running with Leo Laporte for a really long time. Yeah. Did brilliantly, like just fantastic. Leo loved the coffee. So, and we, we know that segment has um, money, money to, to spend, spend. And, yeah. and, they, and they do it well. So, um, all right, well listen, fascinating, Brim, we're gonna send this to you, obviously. We <laughs> like you. We think you're brilliant. We'd love to work with you. Is that too shameless? Is that like <laughs> no, a little- No, I'd say it's kinda, pretty, kinda pretty on Kind of <laughs> on the nose. Okay, but for the rest of you, um, if you have ideas for what a company like Brim should do to really burst into a very congested marketplace already um, and, and kind of make their splash, make their, their pour over splash, as it were, uh, we'd love to hear it. Um, that's it, yeah? Good. Yeah. All right, I'm Joel. Can. So long from Detroit. We'll see you next time.